All set. Thanks. All right, Toby, I think we just did the roll call. Let's do it officially. Okay, um, Tom Roche, of course, yeah. Anita Tripp, Todd Tyler. He here. Okay, Joe Carroll, Christine Miles, or Chris Miles, I'm sorry. Here. <laughs> I, I had the C Miles. Okay, <laughs> e, e Collins, Ella. Here. Okay. Jay Donahue. Here. Christina Durkee. Here. And Dan Shields. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, uh, do you want to do the pledge, Tom? Yes. I was just going to say it went out of order a little bit, but yeah, please join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all. All right, so uh, first up, here is uh, Mr. Ward. You're muted, Dan. I wanted to thank you all first before we started for coming together on such short notice, uh, but certainly everybody uh, from the board, I'm guessing uh, several people from the public know that it's a pretty important issue we need to discuss tonight, having to do with um, a, a call I received last Thursday around noontime from the Fort Edward Town Assessor, uh, Victoria Hayner. That call to me let me know um, th that she was going to be reducing the assessment she had provided to us just a few weeks before on the Irving property by about $5 million. Um, so we do need to talk about that this evening. I wanted to start by just going down through the assessed value change timeline briefly um, and verbally with, with, with everyone that's on the call. Uh, so I will, I will start there. And as, as, as the board knows, I've been trying to keep you apprised um, all along uh, where we're going because the Irving pilot is a huge, a huge thing for our school budget and for the village. And certainly um, to a lesser extent for the town of Fort Edward because we're all the taxing districts. And you've heard me say many times that Irving has been a great partner to the school and donated a lot of money as well. So I don't want that to be lost in this conversation. Uh, so on March 5th, as we were working through our budget, I reached out to the assessor just to just to see where we were going to be at with Irving. I knew the pilot was ending. Um, I've, I've become pretty familiar with the pilot documents, and, and some of you have as well. I uh, reached out and just said, uh, Assessor Hainer, could you let me know if calculating the new taxable assessed value for the school district is as easy as adding the $22 million from the pilot document on to last year's assessed value. Uh, the response I received that day to my email was, no, you don't have to worry about it. The pilot goes on for one more year. Um, and at that time, we'll have the reeval taken care of, so it'll be all set. And I'm obviously paraphrasing, folks. Um, I, I responded by saying, no, for the school, the pilot ends July 1. I need a new value for July 1. Uh, she wasn't sure about that. She, she had mentioned she didn't necessarily have great uh, pilot records. So I sent her the pilot agreement along with the uh, tax abatement schedule that evening. Um, and she said she would contact the IDA, uh, the group that grants the pilots to get some guidance and, uh, and get back to me as soon as she could. That same night, I sent an email to Dave O'Brien from the IDA, the Warren Washington County IDA, um, because as you know, I've had some dealings with the county and I had his email address um, and just asked him the same question. Uh, he confirmed to the best of his recollection without having the doctor in front of him that I was correct and the pilot would end July 1 of this current year. Uh, but he was going to check in with the IDA attorney, Kara, um, and he did so and, and he did respond in, in a timely fashion. Um, 
working through the timeline. Uh, I I was waiting to hear back from Assessor Hayner from the 5th, and we had that exchange, and I was going to hear back from her. Um, the next time I heard back from her was Tuesday, March 23rd. So the first date was the 5th. The next date is the 23rd. Um, at that time, she let me know she had, she had just heard back from the IDA, and that yes, the pilot was done, and she would have to um, she would have to provide a value. At that time, she thought the value would be the 22 million times the 73 percent equalization rate. Um, and the next day on the 24th, she provided me with a number of 16 million 81 thousand 278 dollars. Uh, and so we went from our first budget forecast of 22 million. We we quickly turned around with the help of Charlene, uh, quickly turned around and, and changed it so there was 16 million, 81 thousand, uh, 278 dollars coming back on, uh, based on that email from March 24th from Assessor Hayner. Um, and that was that was really the end of. My correspondence with the assessor, certainly I sent those numbers on to Charlene so we could do it um, and update the documents. And as the board knows and, and folks in the community know that have been on our meetings, at first we were talking about a reduction in tax rate of, of over a dollar. I don't have the exact number right here in my in my head and I don't have it right here in front of me. Um, and after that change from 22 million to 16 million, we were talking about a change in assess, uh, assess rate, tax rate, of uh, 70, 70 something cents. And again, I'm talking without having them all laid out right here in front of me. Um, and then on last Thursday, so that would be April 29th at noon, I received that call saying, uh, that was the next correspondence from the assessor. There was nothing in between that said something was being looked into, that something might change. And, and that person, to be fair, is not required to provide that notification to me or to the school district. And I understand that completely. Um, but saying that it was going down by another $5 million. So that's the timeline of the change in assessed value. So now we're sitting at right around $11 million for the for the Irving property um, when we had started with 22 million. And again, the assessor has full, full authority to do so, um, but it has made it problematic for us because we have some statutory deadlines that we're required to meet. Um, and Charlene has reminded me of them often since I told her um, the situation that we were in. And I understand why. Uh, so I have done some work on uh, getting some special consideration from the State, Educa State Education Department, um, along with our attorney, uh, one of our attorneys, Ryan Mullally from the Gervin and Palazzo firm. So I'll talk about that a little bit later. But so that's, that's the changes, um, 22, to 16 to 11. And when your entire community is is assessed, a taxable assessed value is $118 million, um, $11 million is a lot. Uh, as you know, we were we were taxable assessed value of $176 million just five years ago. And so we've had our, our uh, certainly had our struggles and our challenges that we've been working through to provide um, to provide great programs programs for our students and to, to retain um, effective staff to work with our students. So budget scenarios. Yeah, before you go to budget scenario, yeah. just, just a question for clarity, because I'm sure there's a billion questions out there, but the ultimate question is this. The $11 million, it's what, $10.9 million, whatever it is, um, it's legally binding. It's something that is absolutely used to measure the value and it was done legally and it is binding and what we have to respond to. Is that correct? So, yes, correct. So she, she has full authority based on, based on any opinion. And, and, and frankly, uh, I knew that going into this, she has full authority to place the value on that property. We do not have any recourse that any of our attorneys have told us nor the village attorney who I spoke to today. Uh, he also is saying we have no recourse as far as having that value changed. So that is a value we must use. That is a value that's gonna be used by Washington County Real Property to calculate the tax bills for our taxpayers when they go out next September. That is the value. 
to my knowledge, there's no mechanism for it to go back up now that that rule was submitted last Friday to real property. There is a mechanism for people to challenge their assessments to go down. Um, and I know Ella knows about that process, but there, there's a grievance day and um, any taxpayer can, can go and be heard on grievance day and uh, ask to have their assessment lowered. Um, to my knowledge, there's no mechanism for it to go back up once that May roll is turned in. Final rolls are due um, by the assessor. Uh, I believe it's August 1st, so end of the summer, and that's prior to the tax bills being printed. So that's why that, that cycle works that way. So the people who can grieve on grievance day and the proper calculations can be done over the summer and then August 1st, that roll is due. And then the tax bills are printed shortly thereafter because we're pushing them out of here um, at the beginning, end of August, beginning of September by the statutory deadline. If there's other questions, I'll take them on, well, I guess while we're going through from board members. I, I got another one right off the top of, the, top of my head. The 73% absolutely applies to industry so, that, that way? So that that's 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 a object of debate for some people. And I know I mentioned that to the board that, um, that there was certainly a group or a, a set of individuals in the village who feel very strongly that that equalization rate should not have been applied because the 22 million was a negotiated pilot. And at the end, um, that negotiated pilot there are people who, who, who would say that that should have been the taxable assessed value, not the full assessed value. So that, that's where that, that sticking point is, um, that if that was the taxable value, then the 73% should not be multiplied by the 22 million. But if that was supposed to be full value, then yes, you would have to apply the 73% equalization rate. And so the assessor made that determination that the equalization rate should be applied and did so to get us to the 16 million. Um, and I remember speaking with the board about um, the fact that there was some people who were, were uh, questioning that. And, at, and at, that, at that time I had mentioned to the board that I believe we should, we have to factor all of our budget documents using the 16 million because that's what she has said on it. We can't go with anything but that um, and, and, and spending our time in any other direction would not necessarily be the most productive thing with all the budget work we had to do. I had a conversation somewhat like that with the board members. I know I did. So, so you, you've spoken to a lot of people over the last couple of days. I know there's some folks who thinks this is a really bad shake here and we're already dealing with a decimated situation that just got worse. So, Ultimately, we have no choice but to abide by that and make decisions tonight because there's no recourse in the near future that would give us the ability to do anything else. That, that is correct. And actually, there are statutory deadlines that we have missed. There are more coming up, uh, like right on top of us, statutory deadlines. Uh, the conversation with the State Education Department today um, with Mr. O, uh, his name is escaping me, but I talked with him for a while today. They're actually, they normally post the statewide property tax report cards tomorrow. Uh, all the data is loaded. Uh, they have actually said they will wait until they hear from me this evening so that our information can be edited by them if necessary. And I'll say if necessary, so that it could be included in the state um, disbursement of that information tomorrow. So I've got some work to do tonight, even after we're done, to communicate the correct information. Uh, it's it's Jay O'Connor, I think, or Jay O'Connell is the name of the gentleman um, at state ed at the state education department that's waiting for that information from me after we are done this evening. Dan, going back to what you said about people appealing, can they appeal, or is it just for individuals? Like this number is not going to go lower. Right, so right. Irving, Irving could appeal. You are, you are correct. Irving could go to Grievance Day and sit in front of that Grievance Board. And I, I, I got it right, Ella, you're on that. You're on that one, I think. Grievance Day is today, by the way, May 4th. Yeah, so, so they, 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 well, they have to file it right, Todd, and then they have a chance to be heard. So they, they, could, they absolutely could. So I guess looking back, if the assessor had not changed um, the taxable assessed 
last Thursday. Uh, Irving could have said, ah, 16 is too high. We're going to grieve it. And then there would have to be, uh, that process would have to be followed to determine what the new taxable value would be if any change was going to be made. But yes, they absolutely could, Christina. I, I, I haven't heard from them. I don't know that the assessor has heard from them with any displeasure about um, the 22 million or the 16 million or the now current 11 million. Okay. Uh, well, other questions on assessed value change? All right, so I wanted to just uh, quickly go through the budget scenarios and I know that the board the board saw these um, or had these over the weekend. Uh, put them put them together on Friday um, real quickly uh, with care, but you'll see that there's handwritten my handwriting is on them. Uh, they are not professional documents or working documents for us, um, but we had a, a pretty quick time frame to get information out to you. I wanted you to be able to digest it a little bit, ask some questions. Are you um, are you folks seeing my screen now? It says option one in my handwriting. Okay. Yes. Just to make sure. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Um, so option one, and this is just our, ta our property tax report card. This was the easiest way for me to show you what we were going to do. Don't worry about the num. I mean, you can worry about the numbers, but this is published. It's going to be published. It isn't something that's going to go away um, when we have a finalized version. So this is the one that Charlene submitted. I'm using it as a template for a couple of ideas or scenarios that I want to present to the board um, over the weekend, and I'm going to just show them tonight for the for the public and for the board um, for our discussion purposes. And the first one was leave it alone, do nothing, and we all know that. If our taxable assessed value goes down and we leave the levy alone, um, that our tax rate is going to go up from what we had been projecting to people. Uh, we have been projecting $28.54, I believe. Um, if we leave the levy where it is, uh, with, the, with the drop in assessed value, you're going up to $29.82. And there's one more little wrinkle in this, but I'll give you um, – I'll give you general numbers and then I'll talk about the other wrinkle in this. So that was kind of option one real quickly. And certainly there's more options, but I try to give some baseline. Option two, reduce the budget. And you can just see on that line that if we reduce that 11,096,764 by 150,000, then we can reduce the levy by $150,000. Certainly to reduce our budget, we'd have to make uh, reductions in, in, in our budget um, likely in programs because that's what we restored in our in this in this budget, and that would produce a tax rate somewhere around twenty eight dollars and fifty one cents, uh, which is which is right around what we were telling people. We were saying we were going to be around twenty eight fifty five, which was uh, about seventy cents lower per thousand than last year. In order to get there, we have to cut something out of the budget, right? And we'd be looking at our programs again, and then three. Uh, was apply fund balance. Uh, we have been showing fund balance projections, although um, the application of our fund balance does make our overall long-term sustainability take a hit. Um, I I'll say it that I won't quantify the hit, but it, it means it takes a hit. Uh, but if we were just to leave the budget alone, which means we leave the programs intact that we've talked about restoring and knowing that we didn't restore everything we took out last year, um, but we restored some things this year to, to help provide a, uh, a good opportunity for our students. We take that $150,000 out of the levy. Um, and our levy was at the cap at that $3,392,000. So we'd be going well below the cap. Um, and we, we apply, we apply $150,000 of fund balance. It's the same numbers, right? We're going to have less fund balance at the end of the year. And that gets to that same tax rate of $28.51. So the math of this is if we have about $150,000 to put in as additional revenue, you can keep the tax rate that we've been um, talking about at our last several meetings. Uh, that, that's, that's the math of it. Dan, I'd just like to make one comment that that really is not revenue 
It's your fund balance, which is your stabilization and savings uh, for your five-year plan. And so this is not additional revenue. We are not generating any additional revenue. We are borrowing from our fund balance and that is not replaceable and it will be gone forever. And also on the tax cap calculation, if you are going out less than the cap, then the taxpayers are not paying their, um, their share of the debt and you lose that money forever. It never comes back. So I just wanted to add those two points. Thank yeah. you. So that's, that's option three, obviously, that Charlene is, is talking about, uh, correct? Yeah, okay. that is. Yeah. And, and, and Charlene, thank you for clarifying. Um, we just, it moves to the revenue side of the budget. I, I, I understand completely what you're saying, but I'm also, you, you taught me this. So it, we would be moving that from the fund balance to the revenue side of the budget. So I'm using, trying to use the appropriate language, but you are absolutely correct. The money's coming out of our savings account, right? That's the layman's way to say it. Comes out of your savings uh, to pay for the $11 million budget and it's gone from your savings forever. Right. And just just a point about the first two before we go any further. I mean, Charlene's clarity on the third one's fantastic. The first one is what it costs to run the school the way we proposed it. Correct. That, so that's, that, what, that's what it costs. Okay. So the, the tax rate of 2982 at our current assessment and what's going on is what it costs to run the school with everything intact. Option two is cutting programs, which is something we tried to avoid this year. Um, but the only way to keep a, a tax rate that we wanted to go out this year, which gives a, a, a bit of a reduction, um, is to take away $150,000 out of the things that we added back. So, and the third one is all about longevity and, and stability and savings to add to future issues and, and future years. Um, that is significantly diminished and it affects our ability to recover tax going forward because we're not going to the tax cap, correct? You, you, I would say that's, that's a fair statement, Tom, on all three of those. Okay. So I also, and the board of scenes, I just got to swing them around. Give me one second. And they should be the right way now. And, and this is just showing you where the, the tax, the tax rate numbers come from, right? And I just wanted to point out that this is where we were when we thought Irving was 16 million. We thought we had 118 million of taxable assessed value circled in my, my, my scribbling, I, I apologize. And that was produced in this tax rate of 2855 over here. So that's that's where we were um, before Thursday at noon. I'll say it that way. And and, and to be honest, I was I was um, I was really proud of the work that we had done and the way that the community had responded to the meetings we had so far about about that prospect right there, the original. Um, that's just the second sheet of that. Um, and this is where I got a little a little uh, pen happy. But, but this shows where we go to 113 million as taxable assessed value for our community. I didn't change all the numbers. I just changed the ones we needed to look at. And it shows you if we keep the levy the same, you get that 2982 tax rate. So the only that's that's that change is just letting the levy letting the assessed value change keeping the levy the same that's your tax rate and the second page of that uh, and this is doing both things and just showing that that gets us to 28 dollars and 50 51 cents with that same 113 um, million dollars as uh, taxable assessed value and the second page of that uh, so, so those are the three. There's one other wrinkle in this. And so uh, I'm just going to stop sharing. For, unless, actually, is there questions about that before I – it's just the same numbers, just in a different spreadsheet for folks so you can see where we're getting them from. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing for a minute. So the other wrinkle in this is that the role was turned in last week. Um, so I, I reached out 
on Monday and then again today to the Office of Real Property at Washington County um, and got some information from Laura Chadwick, who works in that office. So I want to say thank you to her for providing it to me so quickly. Uh, I asked her to provide me with an updated taxable assessed value for the Fort Edward School District based on the role that was turned in by the assessor last week. So in these scenarios that I gave the board, um, with the reduction, we were looking at 113, 734, 156. Uh, it's actually about a little over $300,000 lower than that for taxable assessed value as of today, based on the roles that were turned in. So I did a couple of, uh, there's a couple of things. Now I'm gonna show you the numbers on these sheets, um, but I wanna provide some information to you. So in the conversations with the state education department, they do not, they do not endorse and likely will not accept. Um, you can do nothing, you can always do nothing, right? Um, you, we can make no changes to our budget. I wanna say it correctly, sorry, I don't wanna be flipping about it. That's always a legal option for you. They said they will not accept option two. They will not allow us to make that change at this time that we've met this, we've missed the statutory deadline to change the property tax cap. So option two, where you reduce your total budgeted amount and therefore can reduce your levy, they will not accept. So that is off the table. All right, so I just wanna be clear. And that's that's new information today at like two o'clock. So I'm, I'm sharing things kind of in real time with, with you. Yeah. Option two meaning cutting program. Well, it's not that, it, not that you can't cut your programs. They're saying you can't change your budget numbers. Your total budget number cannot change at this point in the game. Wow, okay. So that leaves you with option one and option three. And then I'm gonna throw in that little wrinkle about it. Um, and I believe I have them queued up to go, I do. Are you now seeing a colored one that says FE1 at the top? No. All right, hold on, let me... Um, let me present again, share. Okay, so now you see in this light pink, can you see it now? I believe you can. Yeah, it's like a teal, it says FE1, go ahead. Yeah, and so you see next to Fort Edward, 113 million, 430 and 900. That is the taxable assessed value as of today directly from the real property office of Washington County. So if if we if we run with our levy, the 3,392,000 that's been in our proposed budget all along, the tax rate that you will that you will provide, estimated tax rate is $20.90 per thousand. Dan, I just wanted to point out I did email you a little earlier. Uh, the levy was three million three ninety two oh eighty nine. Some for some reason somehow you dropped the eighty nine dollars. So, so slightly, so it would be slightly higher than the twenty nine ninety. Charlene, is that what you're saying? It, it's it's very infinitesimal. I mean, it's so minute, but I just want to make sure. And these, just realize these are all estimates. None of these are exact. Correct. <laughs> Dan, Dan, do we ever get one where the equalization rate was out, and so we would know what it would be at hundred percent? So you're asking for tax on true. I have not calculated tax on true. I didn't have the, I didn't have the time to do so today. Okay, I just was curious. I, I want to. I, I hate to estimate on that because numbers are numbers. But I, okay. I so I'm not going to. Okay. But I can provide that um, if necessary. But I get exactly what you're asking. And thanks, Charlene. That would have been me who dropped that last eighty nine dollars off of that. So I apologize. Um, uh -huh. So, so looking at looking at this chart, here's what it does, and, I, and I'll blow it up at the bottom. With the updated taxable amount as of today, and we make no change to the levy, stay at the tax cap, it will result in a 2990 tax rate, and that's that's an estimate because certainly I left eighty nine dollars off of the levy, but it's also an estimate because the final rolls aren't due till August. But we're trying to provide the best picture for our taxpayers and for the public. And I'm trying to provide the best picture to the board 
based on all the information I have available to me as of today. Um, that's 62 cents above the 2021 school tax rate, which doesn't seem like uh, much, but it's a dollar 35 increase over what we've been what we've been talking about at all our finance committee and board meetings. Yeah. That's that's a significant amount higher. Um, in, in my opinion, I guess I'm a little bit of this is my opinion. Is this going to require a supermajority? No, we're still at the tax cap. Okay. Um, nothing we're going to do is going to is is going to exceed the tax cap. It's all about um, really the decision tonight is will we keep the levy the same, the three million three hundred ninety two thousand eighty nine dollars or whatever we've reported so far. Right. Or will we change the levy to less? And the only way we'd have to go to 60%, Christine, is if we went above the 3392000 and change. That's okay. our tax cap, allowable tax cap. Okay. So moving down, that's just the second page that shows you the, the difference in tax bills. Um, so if you, it's probably worth looking at it. So, um, and these are estimates based on a $100,000 assessment. Somebody's bill would go up by $62.85, and you can see 150 and 200. So, um, but I do know that our community provided a fairly clear message last year, and I don't want to, um, I want to make sure we remember that, and I'm sure that we all do. Um, so, if I do the same thing and I take that new assessed value of $113,430,900. And then we take $150,000 off the levy. And remember, I did miss that $89 at the end that Charlene pointed out. That provides you with a tax rate of $28.58 per thousand. Yeah. And so here's what that does. And I'll blow it back up. Again, those are the, the, the assessment values taxable assessed as of today. Uh, reduces the levy by applying $150,000 of fund balance, which we know, and Charlene spoke to it, and I spoke to it a little bit, That's uh, and Tom spoke to it as well. Uh, the fund balance is about sustainability. Um, but in the green here, you can see applying the $150,000 of unrestricted fund balance results in a $25.58 tax rate per thousand. That's a 70 cent reduction from the 2021 school tax rate. It is a three cent increase over what we've discussed at our meetings. And again, these numbers could be off slightly just because of the $89 I didn't have on the levy, but, but we're, the numbers are really close. So knowing that that 150, if we do take it, it's gone. Could we try to split the difference? and do like 75K and then put out, what would the number, what would the increase be on the rate for that? So I don't have the sheet ready to do it in real time, but I understand okay. what you're saying. So if it goes from 29, let's go to the top. We, we can do this if we just cut it, the difference in half, right? The difference between 29.90, 29.90, and 2558 58 we just got to get the math on that right it's going to be 27 some odd books so it's it's a it's a dollar if i'm doing my math right a quick scratch pad here that's a dollar 32 difference right so if you take half of that half of a dollar 32 is a, a dollar 66 or 66 cents, right? It's 29.24. 66 cents gets you to, I think that's what it is, gets you to what Chris said, probably 29.24. And that puts you three cents lower, about about three to four cents lower than last year's rate. Because you can see last year's right here, that 29, 27, 5191. Wait, maybe I lost you somewhere. You're saying if you only do seventy five thousand, it's only going to affect you uh, seventy uh, sixty six cents. Is that what you're saying? Hold on, I am saying that, Tom, but I, you're asking me to calculate this without my spreadsheet open. 
if it's if it's twenty nine ninety, if we don't apply anything, right? And the other one is twenty eight point fifty eight. The difference oh, the difference between the two rates is a dollar thirty two. And if I divide that by two, it's sixty six cents. So I'm giving you an estimate that if we were to say apply seventy five thousand in fund balance, you'd have about sixty six cents that you'd have to add to the twenty eight fifty eight. So us, I think Chris did it. Twenty nine twenty four, Chris yeah. comes yeah, out yeah. to twenty nine twenty four. And last year's rate was twenty nine dollars and twenty eight cents if I round off. So yeah. that means it would be four cents lower. And again, these are estimates. Yeah, I was going by the twenty five fifty eight number. The difference between the two of those, so that's that makes a lot more sense. Okay. Um, So I guess the question is, and I can pull up the I can pull up the spreadsheet and see uh, and see is that what it is, Tom? Do I have a typo on the bottom there? But there it is, the twenty five fifty eight. The question is, do we want to apply fund balance to the levy, or do we want to do we want to um, do we want to keep the levy where it is? Uh, that's that's the main question. That's where I would put it across to you guys for a discussion, and yeah, and see so, what you want to do. Right. So we know we know two's out of the question. So it's keep it where it is because that's what it costs, and it's a it increase in the tax. Or three, use the funds. The problem with just using the funds, and correct me if I'm wrong, it also affects our ability to capture tax. In subsequent years, correct? Correct. So it's not just about shifting money from the funds into the uh, into operating. It's going to affect our ability to recoup money in subsequent years, which affects our ability to sustain. Well, so Tom, as you saw money. last year, you What's know that? the budget has to pass. Also, I mean, I'm all about it. I hear you. But, I but also, we need to provide an education to our kids. Yeah. They have suffered long enough. Remember, seventy. Christina just happened to pick seventy-five. Just split it. Make it seventy. Uh, make it seventy-five thousand. Split the one fifty. So you can go any level of that one fifty you want to. And again, the one fifty. The reason for the hundred fifty thousand is because you're trying to get the tax rate, this new tax rate, to match the old one. So the hundred fifty. There's a reason for the hundred fifty. Half is you know an arbitrary figure. You can pick ten percent, twenty percent, whatever you want. However, how much you want to reduce that tax rate. So, Chris, you're right, I, and we did we did fight hard to keep these programs, put them back in, and we want to give the kids everything we can give them. Yeah, every year. I mean, every I year think, we go. Know, I, this think, again, I, I totally agree with you on all that. Just you know, in looking at what happened last year, when you when you go back, what happens, Dan, when you go back to contingency? Where are we there? Right. So, so that that's that's it's, the most difficult thing. If you end up at contingency. You are back at the three million seven thousand dollar levy, um, which is painful to, to think about. Uh, certainly, it would take two two um, two vote two votes of our taxpayers refusing to approve that budget for that to occur. Um, last year, we found out that the budget did not pass the first time. Um, we made reductions. It, it, it was even farther away from passing the second time. And I don't know if that's would be a trend. Um, I, frankly, I don't want to find out if it's going to be a trend. But but I but it's the decision of the board um, on which way we which way we go. Hey, uh, one one thing, Dan. Before you go forward, uh, Dave, uh, would you please mute your phone? There's some stuff going on behind you. It's kind of cutting Dan off. Thank you. Right. I can um, I can do it, Dave. If you want, I can mute you. I'll do it, Dave. And then, um, no, I, I get I get the thing about the budget, Todd. We we got to pass the budget, but there's no guarantee that you know it's going to pass if we do do option three. 
Um, my only point about the whole thing is number one is what it costs. It's what it costs to run the school. And that's what it's going to cost next year, maybe more. Um, and <clears throat> Irving's, you know, I don't think their assessment's going to go higher. Um, so we're going to have the same thing happen every year, um, if not worse next year, if we start dipping into funds and not able to collect tax correctly due to the fact that we're going way under the cap with option three. So I hear all about needing that budget to pass. No one understands that more than I do, but there's no guarantee 2990 and and the other option 2924. I don't know if that's going to make a difference in pass or fail. No, you don't think based on it being more or less than last year's tax rate it is important? I just, I, I know, I know there was a key word that everyone talked about last year that didn't have anything to do with it being higher. It had to do with the amount that it was, meaning, you know, the, the percentage of increase. That was the big focus. And yeah, the difference between 66 cents isn't a big percentage difference. We also need to consider that the 66 cents that we're talking about, we're reinstating all those programs that we got, that we had cut. You know, we realized some savings from a couple of, whether it was the insurance or whether it was the debt service, we realized savings there. So we got money back we hadn't fully anticipated beforehand. So I think if you look back and, and look at the programs and what we're, we're putting back into the budget, I don't know, 66 cents, is, that's a pretty good, you know, I think that's maybe swallowable. I mean, plus, if we if if we're going out saying it's not increasing really over the current rate, like that's not a terrible thing to for people to hear that it's not going up. Well, it, it, if we yeah. if we do the seven if we take some and oh. do the seventy five seventy five or whatever to make up for that hundred and fifty. Well, I know, but the consequences of that to say it's not going up. I don't know. I don't know. If to get a budget to pass to well, is what I was thinking. No, and, and I, I agree. We got to do something to pass the budget. Um, and the semantics of it being lower, I guess, sounds good out there. But it, the, the consequences next year, I mean, just think about next year when we do this. There's, there's nowhere to go low. It's going to go up significantly, I even think, based on assessments and based on the fact that we can't capture more money because of the tax cap we'd be going out at and the fact that uh um there's another fact that, uh, that the fact that we're using seventy five thousand or however much money we're using from our savings it just makes next year even more difficult all right so tom People what are you the school you, you gotta you, that's what it costs go ahead chris all right so just so uh, there's a little bit of clarity on my part just so i understand what you're saying if we go this third route this year next year there might not be any wiggle room so next year if we're in the same boat we have to go with scenario a like we have i mean because there won't be there won't be money potential money in the funds to reduce anything next year's budget when it gets put out will be this is the number we can't go any lower because we don't have any extra funds in the account because we used them last year there might potentially not be any money in the account next year so this is it so is that what you're saying? Like, is that the implication that you're trying to get across? That's that certain. Not? Yeah, that that's definitely one of them. But there's a tax in, in uh, right. There's a tax problem too, and Charlene may be able to demonstrate that better than I'm explaining it. But the lower we go below, what well, that's going to force us to go below, it's going to make it more difficult to capture that money next year. Uh, that's what I think. So but Tom, even even if you went to contingency going with a close to four hundred thousand dollars difference, that would even drastically hurt us even more moving forward because we're basing it on that versus I, I understand where you are. It's just this this idea of trying to get that right number to be able to get this thing to pass the first time or even the second time. I think the first time it needs to pass. So Charlene and Dan, you're the ones who are who are looking at the numbers the most. What is what is your gut? saying so let me start with this charlene and i i think we get along pretty well i don't know that we agree on the best way to go forward with this one much like you guys are struggling with it um I, charlene and i both want a budget to pass 
we we aren't sure if we agree on will it pass if it goes up by that 60 cents um, over what it was this year. Uh, what we've talked about is we know it goes against all the messaging we've done that says our budget reduces taxes, restores programs, and uh, I forget the third line in my in my mantra right now. Um, I totally we totally agree that taking 150 or any amount from your unrestricted fund balance does um, put a chink in the armor for sustainability. I'll say it that way. Um, Shirley, I don't I don't know if you want to. I think it's worth you um, saying what you need to say as well. Although you, you said it pretty, pretty well a few minutes ago. But I, I would love for the budget to pass the first time around. I would love not to have to change our messaging, but I understand why we would have to change our messaging. And I would just change our messaging using the information of why. I just don't know if at this stage in the game, that will be an effective way to get the budget to pass with our community. Um, when the message changes at the last minute, even though it's not our fault, but we've said it's not our fault before, right? And that hasn't changed the community's feelings about things. And I've only been here five years. Many of you have been here a lot longer. So if you feel differently, I understand that because you have a better feeling of your community. I'm dealing with five years of experience. I'll turn it over to you, Charlene. I just have three points. Number one, you put a budget together. You put a very good budget together. We've spent a lot of time and we've included a lot of people and it's a good budget. And I think you should stand behind it and give your voters a chance to do the right thing. Number two, any money lost in the tax cap calculation never comes back to you and your taxpayers are not paying their share of the debt. The state pays their share the tax cap calculation calculates the taxpayer share of debt. If you don't, if you use fund balance, you're using your savings, it's gonna hurt your sustainability and you're not plan making a plan for the future. So I vote for this board, I vote for this budget, and I ask the taxpayers to support this board of education doing the best job um, and their job. And You've done your job, now let the taxpayers do theirs. Well said, thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. So that was helpful. No, but, and I, and I, I don't just agree with Charlene. All, all the points she makes are great points. Um, the biggest fear here, we know what the right thing is. The right thing is to restore the programs that we said, understand what it costs to run a school, and go out with that budget, because like Charlene said, all the worth. So we know it's the right thing. What we're worried about is if it's going to pass and the disaster that happens if it doesn't. And it's a disaster with a capital D. There's no doubt about it. Is 66 cents going to make that difference? I could make a much, I think we can make a much more viable argument saying that we put in what the kids need. It's been a rough year. It's in there. And this is what it costs. Instead of saying, well, we did this. We took some money out of savings, kind of get you 60 cents. It doesn't, I don't know. In, in my mind, I think we, we, this is what it costs to run the school. If we can't convince our taxpayers that case, we lost anyway. It's going to be the same battle every single year. Yeah, but Tom, I think that, you know, if, you know, when we come out and lay this out and we say what's happening, and if we show that we're trying in some cases to help the taxpayers, yeah, we're all in it for, you know, the, the students here. Um, but we also have to realize that, again, who passes this budget are not the kids or not the Board of Education. It is the, the community members. So if, if there's some way that we can look at that budget and see if we can actually see if we, and, and, and uh, Christine's talking about that 75,000 or whatever, just to show that, it, is there something there? And I know, Chris, uh, you're going to lose something, you know, if you cut anything. I mean, we, we went through and restored everything. But I just know, I mean, last year, how, how we went went towards it, I just think that we have to do something maybe a little bit different to show that we're, we're really looking at it really closely based on this new information and how we, we can, we could to get to get this to pass. Uh, I don't know if we just go out with where where it is. I don't know if it can pass. Here's the other scenario: if you if you do something now and it doesn't pass, you have to do more. 
So you're doubling up what you have to do. If you go out now, it passes wonderful. If it doesn't, then you got to do some work because you got a second round to deal with. But if you're already chipping away, where do you go when the first one fails? You might as well just go to contingency. So you can't you, you can't be here, work on a budget, get everything in line, bring things back, do what you have to do with the intention of saving people money. You get, I won't use the word, bad things happen and a, a crappy assessment comes out. And now we have to do a whole bunch of, of undoing. It doesn't make sense. This made sense prior to Thursday of last week. If you chop it up now and it doesn't pass, you're going to chop it up again before you know it. You're right back to square one and the contingency budget. So why do it now? Also remember last year we were dealing with a, with a ton of pregame turmoil. So there was, whether it was the 18%, the 15%, you, and you also, and I'm not going to say what they are because everybody knows what they are, but you had particular sticking points in that budget that people wanted to see done. And it wasn't, and and, the, and it was paid for. So this is different, I think. And to go back to what Chris always says, you know, we got to we're putting those programs back in. So not only did we lose, we didn't. The, the both budgets went down, taxes still went up. You lost a lot of program and lost a lot of a lot of extras for the kids. So now we're looking at this budget at status quo if, we, if it's there. All this stuff is being put back in the stuff that the kids really got to have because we, you know, you can go to school if you want to, but we got to give them an education and it's got to be a whole education. And we got to do that. And I think it's a minuscule amount if, if to, to look at what Tom's looking at. If you take a look at the whole picture and say, listen, this is all these programs are going back in, everything's going in, and it's not what are we talking about? A dollar something, the a dollar 32, whatever the tax increase is going to be. So we got to weigh that in the negativity is not surrounding the whole thing now that it is. And I'm not saying that that just because it's quiet, everything is good. But there was so much negativity involved in the entire budget just alone with the numbers, 18 and 15. Uh, and, and those couple extra points there that we had distinct issues with. So it's, the scenarios are quite different. Now, Dan, will we uh, lay out to the, to the public uh, what will have to be cut um, if it does go to contingency like we did last year. I think if they do see, you know, where, what we're trying to put out there and what will happen. Uh, and again, I'm just worried about that, that, that thing going to contingency, uh, what we'll have to cut. Um, I know last year we went through the round, so we already had that all figured out. Right. So. I know it's hard to do. It's too, too well, many. Well, here's the thing. I've got, I've got four days and I've got to redo a newsletter. And I've got to redo a tax cap, and I've got to redo all the that, and all that is going to happen. That is all going to happen, Todd, because it has to happen. But if, you're, Todd, if we're trying to do other things, I'm yeah, one, yeah. I'm one yeah. person. I see it. I do. So I think if this goes to t contingency budget, our our school is shit. I'm sorry, but it is. So straight up, that's what happens if we have a contingency, and I think the public should understand that. Straight up words. That's it. We we don't have a school if we have to go to a contingent. So we have our choice. We, and it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't type of situation. We either keep the budget the way it is and go to the 2990 and have a school that the kids are getting, you know, an education that the kids are, are working towards getting a full, complete education because we're not there yet. We're still below where we should be. Right. Or we drop it a little bit and then we start screwing ourselves for future years. In the in the long term sustainability, which is another issue that we're dealing with, and that's that's happening in our in our public right now too. So people just need to make a choice. It's like we're the board of education. We need to provide an education for our kids, and that's what this number A provides. It provides us an education, and it keeps us a little bit of money in our piggy bank to continue to allow us to have a school in our community. If you, if that doesn't happen, well, then I guess the decision was made. Let me throw in one more aspect, too, that we're kind of forgetting. Remember, last year, we had to go super majority. So even with that 18%, we had to go 60%. It passed easily at 
Sure. So yeah. there's support in the community. I don't know, you know, we yeah, like the school as we do. That's, That's a fair point. point. I, th I think we were at 55% we last year. And I think, and remember, the second, number of voters. The second, the, when the second vote comes up, it's always, there's always a, a, a distinct level of skepticism as to why wasn't this in the first place. And, you know, I understand that. So that's why that one went down. But you had 55 or 56% in the first one. Yeah. And that was an 18%. So I think we're missing that perspective. We got, we're kind of kissing off the support that's out there. There's support out there. People want this place here. Sure. That's and, a good point, James. Yeah. I think it's really going to be really important, Dan, how, how the, since the message was already out about what the plan was, I think it needs to be even mere, like overly stated that this was not because of anything that the school did or anything. I think that message needs to really get pushed out there in case anybody has any question, because it's, it, it's, it's worrisome that people are hearing a dollar amount or whatever. And then you, like you said, at the last minute, it's changing. I think that is, that is the, the most dangerous part of, of this coming along at the time it did so that it seems suspect. Let me dovetail on what Christina said. It just to, just and she's right. We got to get that out. But we, what we got to be careful about: this is not Irving Tissue. So I we, we say Irving Tissue quite a bit. This is not them. They're a great community member. We got to make sure this was done by the assessor, and that's where the problem comes. I don't want because I don't want people in the community saying, "Oh, this Irving Tissue, this or no." Irving Tissue is a good partner. We want to be careful that that's the message that we get out when this assessment was changed. It wasn't them. Ella. Yeah, the one thing I look really like that Christina said is if you're looking at option one or option three, neither one of them are really losing program. One is going up, the other is a sustaining. But if you go to the 75% or the 75,000, excuse me, would that help satisfy both? Your tax rate isn't going up a dollar or something yep. and yet you're still maintaining program i know the sustainability we've got to look at down the road but i'm just wondering right now because it's so late can we really go out i know everybody's saying oh it's only a dollar something but when people are thinking their tax rate's going to go down a little bit or be the same and then it goes up it doesn't matter how much i think they lose some trust in us and i I'm just wondering if we can't find a balance between the two that are helping everybody in the community. Yes. So let me, let me, so while you folks were having your discussion, I did, I did pull up the sheet just to make sure that the numbers I was doing quick on the scratch pad there were correct. So, and I, and again, it just happened to work that I had this ready right when you got, got done, Ella. But this is um, what you get for a tax rate if you use the 75,000. So we were exactly correct with the scratch pad math. Um, you'd be at 29.24 per thousand, which is about three cents less than last year if you applied 75,000. And again, these are estimates, but I did put the um, $89 back in there, Charlene. So we're a little closer. Um, so I, I'm not trying to make Ella's point. I just want to make sure because uh, some folks had asked for that number. No, it's, it's it's an important number because it is it's a somewhat of a compromise. The only thing that, that that worries me is again our ability to recoup, and the fact that we're masking what it actually costs to run this place. So I'll, I'll provide maybe one more piece of information. So our levy that we were trying to go out with this year was um, three million three hundred something. So if you just take 2% quickly of that, you get $66,000. And I realize that's not exactly how the tax cap calculation works. But if you just want to take 2% on your levy, it's about $66,000. And if we're going to give up $75,000, you've given up a whole year of 2%. And, and, and I don't know, Charlie, if I'm saying that right. And I know I'm overgeneralizing but I'm just trying to give people a point of reference on this. You, you're giving up that $75,000 forever times 2%. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll take that one down. All right. So, Anyone else have any comments on either one of these? I think we heard from most board members, but does anyone else have any 
points on on this stuff? No, just remember, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily have to be 75. It could be something less. <laughs> this, and so, I mean, I get it. We want to look at, uh, you know, the possibility of, of using something in that fund, but I wouldn't want to go too far, but I am certainly not against taking some. Just ameliorate that price, that tax increase. So I'll be, I'll be clear on what has to happen tonight. Tonight I need and ex either need to hear, no, we're not changing it or we're going to apply the exact number of dollars because I have to report it tonight. So right. I understood one more point about splitting it. Let's just say the worst thing in the world happens and the first round goes down. What do we do next? Do we take another 75,000 out? Do we, what do we do next? So be careful when you start in the middle because you can only go low. If you start high, you get to the middle next time. So just be careful where we're starting at here because it's only going to deplete what we're offering. We're going to go for another hundred, another, now we go 150,000 out of savings that we never recoup and so on and so forth. It magnifies the more you go out. So that's that's the only caution I have. Uh, you know, however the board decides to go, that's the way we go. But uh, I don't know. You know do, you want to, Tom, do we need to go around the board and, and just see what everyone's opinion is on this? Hmm. It needs a direction here. Well, it yeah. needs a direction and a vote. So yeah, so are, are we going with option one or are we going with some type of form of three? Uh, should I put one to a vote, maybe? Okay, you know what I'll do? Um, so, so you, you talk about a vote with like a motion and things, Tom? I just want to be clear on it. Taking like a straw poll or what you're, what you're That's doing. That's what I'm trying to get a straw poll on, <laughs> on what we're leaning for here. And then if I got to go to a vote for one, it goes down and hopefully three passes or we're screwed uh, or we're in trouble. Sorry. Well, um, it, it, it's Tom, it sounds like right now that. Um, you know, you and James and Chris are with going with this is what I've been hearing with staying the way it is. And Ella, Christina and myself are looking at some uh, some kind of deduction to compromise here. That's what I'm hearing. I don't know, you know, without a straw poll, what's am I reading this correctly? I think, yeah. I think so you're I'll, on the pulse. Yeah. Yeah. You're 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 close, Todd. My my thing is. I'm afraid that going along with what Tom is saying is if we start dipping into our funds, that is going to start seriously putting into doubt the, the sustainability of our school. And obviously that's something that we don't want to happen. So like I started this whole thing out, it's a, it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. It's, but I, I think we need to, I think we need to go, go out with what we, what we need, we're going to, you know, that scenario A. I, I really do. I mean, I, I know we should probably do the other, but that's, it's taken away for potentially future years of our school. So I want to, tr I want to try. And then if it doesn't work, then we kick it back a little bit, but I just. Is, it, it, is anyone who showed up from the board is, is Anita or Joe or. Uh, Chris, you know, to, to re to recoup some of the loss, as Charlene's talking about, I, I, it, it, one of the reasons why we're in this situation is, is based on exactly what you're talking about in terms of trying to trim the budget year after year after year um, for many, many years. So, you know, I can see where everybody's talking about related um, related to that. Um, I was going somewhere with this, though. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think I know where you were going, Todd. That, that five years ago, we had to make some pretty drastic cuts to the levy because we saw what was going to happen to the tax rate. And the levy five years ago was $3,625,000. Um, and, and that has been difficult for us to run our school without having that type of levy. Although at the time, the board knew they had to do it because we had a tax rate that was going to go from $20 to $34 in one year, possibly. And that's I, I was there. I know why we did it because we knew our taxpayers couldn't have a tax rate go to $34 per thousand right. in one year. Um, we didn't want people to, to lose their homes. And I think maybe that was the point you were trying to make that if you don't get it 
if you can't, if you don't get it when you think you can pass it, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage on years when you can't pass it. Unless you can pass it with a supermajority, then you can recoup some of that. But that's again going out with a very positive voting community. But um, yes, yeah, sustainability, though, Chris. I don't know. I mean, you're saying that if it, if it goes down, that people are doubting that. I think there's some doubt related to that, anyways, based on the other factors that are going on currently as well. Um, but. Yeah, you're looking at borrowing. You, I have a problem with borrowing a, a large sum because, again, the long-term sustainability really takes a hit. But there's an arbitrary number. What I, I mean, I don't want to see the tax. Well, how about like a, under a dollar? Let's keep it under a buck. I mean, you could come up with we could borrow a little, a little bit of there, and th and throw that in. That's that's a psychological, you know, borderline there. I just I, I hate to see it all go, but I'm like with crazy. So up? so so let's go with let's go with C. I mean, it, it keeps it at about the same rate as it as it was this year, and that's it. So, if, you're, so you're in favor of C, Chris? Well, I mean, it just seems like that's the way people want to go. They feel that the the public would maybe keep the same amount of of levy amount, so or of a tax rate, so let's go that route, and then the, the chips fall how they fall, you know. Okay, so seventy-five. I I just I'm afraid that if this I, Tom, I agree with you because if this goes down, we're yeah. starting to lose some leverage on us because now we really start dipping into savings or we have to cut programs, and that's I am not cutting programs. I'm I am so against that. Remember, we know next year our revenue is probably not going to go up. Our expenses are going to go up. So right. So that's why we that's why we need to keep as much as we can in our piggy bank. For exactly. Some, for some crazy that's amount. That's that's why I think we should. That's why we should go with A. I just I, we got to think ahead. We can't just. I know it's so important to be like we got to focus right now, but we also got to think ahead a little bit too for those for next year, for the year after that, for the year after that. Like who the hell knows what's going to happen? But like. All right, so Dan, I'm, I'm going to suggest something here. We need another board member, it seems, to break this lock we have, um, and that's why we have odd numbers. Um, so um, maybe we move down to uh, the next agenda item and revisit this if another person joins us before we end tonight. Yeah, because this, this is just the discussion portion. Um, yeah. There is an action item lower that deals with the budget. So I, I I can handle that. I also received a message that um, I'm on right now, guys. I just got on. That Anita's gonna be jumping on. <laughs> Anita's here. Good timing, Anita. What were you saying, Dan? You said what? Uh, that, that Anita told me she was gonna be jumping on. Okay. Um, so we can we can bump down for a second and then and then go back. So. Uh, the board had asked me to put out uh, a Google form to collect questions from the community for the Meet the Candidates night. Um, and we were gonna discuss those questions this evening. Uh, as you can see, this is what went out. They're very short, you put the question in. And if you wanted to do multiple questions, when you put the first survey in, it says, submit another response. And you can just click it and put another question in. Uh, so people could have put in multiple if they wanted to, because we didn't want to have any limit on what people provided to us. Uh, we only received 10 responses. I closed it today at about uh, 10 after 4. And I, I quickly took a look at these before the meeting this evening. And I tried to break them into groups. So the yellow are, I think, are all about the merger. I know they're all about the merger. They have a little bit different tone. Uh, to, am I, oh, I'm not presenting them. Sorry. Am I? No. Mm -mm. No. Sorry. I'm just looking at my own screen and talking away. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, Thank you got it. And I will uh, try to get, there we go. Um, so we can read the yellow ones first or, or however you'd like to, but the yellow ones are all about the merger. They, they, they obviously the community members that took the time to put in 
um, these questions. They're, they're four out of 10 people want to know something about the merger. They want to know what people think about it and what they might think the potential downfalls are. Um, and want to know if they can put their personal <clears throat> feelings aside to do what's best for the, for the school um, or the community is what the question says. I don't want to put words in people's mouths. And then you had two in blue at the bottom or teal, whichever color you'd like to call that, that are asking about uh, conflicts of interest and people of the same family. Um, they both had to do with family. Um, and and it's, no, it's no secret that we have a board member on right now with a specific name and we have somebody running with the same name. Um, so that was a that that question showed up twice, and then you had kind of these one-off questions. Uh, what will you do? What can you do differently than the current board to at least sustain, at a minimum, the current programs of current level of education at FE? Um, why is the school so prejudiced against less fortunate kids? Mm. Yeah, that that one um, certainly hits home for me. Yeah. Then a more general question, why do you want to be on the school board? And then one about one that makes a lot of sense. What's your experience with large budgets? Um, certainly we're dealing with budgets every year in Fort Edward. Everybody is, but certainly we're having some pretty in-depth conversations based on a specific set of circumstances here in Fort Edward. So that's what I received. Um, the board can just provide me some direction, what you want me to do with those, condense them. Um, if there's some we want, we don't want, we think um, work or don't work for the purposes. And I had sent out the document to everybody before with the, the general questions that we used last year. Yeah. So we had asked last year, why are you running for the Board of Education? I think that is the same as why do you want to be on the school board? Yep. Um, let's see. And then we had uh, six central questions developed by the board members. I don't have all the rest of them right here in front of me on this one piece. Actually, maybe I do. Uh, last year we had, what are your focus and priorities to strengthen district's goals? What's your vision for the education in this community? What's the primary work of board of education? Uh, it talked about the merger study and financial stress was one of the questions. Uh, it talked about making hard financial decisions. And it talked about um, what are your thoughts about the school closing, the reopening, yeah. please, and, and and the possible challenge that our school faced when it reopens due to COVID. Yeah, that's what we had last year. So I think the process last year, Dan, was we took the questions, we merged those questions that were similar, and formed a question that covered them, and then we picked the select ones that were a little more. Um, you know, uh, like the COVID question and things like that. So, um, and since these are significantly less questions, I believe that came in than came in last year. Um, I think you just cross off the ones that are already on the list we have, maybe add the ones that are different. Um, and that's our list. That's, that's good, Tom. It's a similar process to what we did. Just send it out to the board. If the board has a comment on, uh the formation of one of the questions uh, then you know we can say hey maybe we ask it this way but i think you just send out the final draft and then we all say great and we're good to go excellent uh the only other the only other outstanding item that has to do with meet the candidates was uh, we had some discussion and i don't know where we ended up on it and so if i if i should know i apologize but whether we were going to also have uh, a period of time where we would take live questions somehow through through people typing them into a Google Doc or something where we would do uh, one live question for each prospective board member or maybe two. And I know we had some discussion. There were certainly differing opinions. I just want to get the, the final answer tonight if I could so that um, I know what I have to get done to pull off this event on the 13th. From what I recall, we thought it might be unfair to have pop-up questions um, from the public, especially when you see something. Why is the school so prejudiced against less fortunate kids? So we gave the the, the 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 public the ability to send us questions. We got eleven, maybe ten, 
Um, so I think we form the questions and like we did last year, you know, we, you know, they, they get asked by the proctor. I, I don't think we have a public forum to send questions. And I think there were a couple of board members that thought like uh, uh, in a like fashion than I did. So if anyone has any uh, different opinion on that, please speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> Tom, we did uh, speak about uh, filtering. I, I am aware that you know in a community in a, in a setting, um, and I can probably I don't know if it's if it's worse or easier with the Google Meet setting than it is during a live audience um, in an auditorium uh, uh, approach. But we did discuss that if if questions were to come in, I think with the current setting that we have, there is a way to filter those questions that the inappropriate questions don't even get out to the public. To be able to, to answer, so I think there's a way to be able to uh, negate, you know, those kind of discussions that are going on. Well, and I, th I think certain keywords words would certainly be blocked, but something that doesn't have a keyword. I mean, I think the wisest school so prejudice would have probably went through. But well, no. So what it does is there there ha there's another way of doing it though. Instead of doing it on the chat, so everyone seeing every question, because yeah, the, you're you're looking for some disaster there if that happens. But if there was a Google form or something that's just publicly or privately, sorry, sent to Dan uh, in a, some kind of survey, Dan's looking at then Dan can decide whether he, he's asked the questions or not. So there's a way to to do it behind the curtain, uh, we'll say. Um, uh, isn't that what this was? Yeah, isn't that what this about. was? This was asking the public for their questions. It is. So though, it's essentially the same thing. But sometimes, I mean, a, a, a person may want to ask a, a certain individual a certain question related to something. So the way that we discuss it is that you would go through and you know you have a question and you could you could target a question to a certain person based on what they said, you know, to get more information. Um, sometimes it's, it's more so it's you're not just getting um, the pre-rehearsed answers to questions, but you're really getting what people are thinking and, and who they are, I think, when you force them to think on the spot sometimes. Well, but Dan's got to proctor it, right? And then he's got to so maybe we compromise this way. We want to leave it at an hour. We ask the questions that we have. If for some reason we find we have 10 minutes at the end of the thing, maybe we say, okay, if anyone's got a question out there, send it into this private filtered thingamajig. And then Dan will pick one out that may be relevant and, and ask it. But I think with the amount of questions we're asking, and hopefully we get thoughtful answers, um, it's probably going to take an hour for that process to, to happen. So, but if you guys want on the spot, I, mean, I understand your point, Todd, asking a follow-up uh, question of an answer that a candidate gives. I just don't know if we're set up for that kind of, you know, um, you know response and the time and the proctoring and all that stuff, but it's not a bad idea. So I just want to, would like to hear what other board members uh, have to say about that. And then we'll move on. I don't I think agree. it would be equitable to have people be able to pointedly ask each individual a like, and I don't think that time-wise that would be feasible. I think that if there is time left over, we should open it up for those who didn't get an opportunity to send a message in, and it could be a topic that comes up that they've got a question about. So if there is time, I, I'm with you, Todd. I agree. I think it, if we have some time, it should be open to the public. I agree. Anita, are you are you able to uh, to provide feedback on that one? Sorry, I was muted. Um, no, I agree. I think uh, giving it a few minutes, giving a little bit of time, is a good idea. All right. So, so I I I can make that I can make that happen. Um, and, and you're exactly right, Todd. I probably would do it through a Google form where I ask, have people say their question and who do you want me to ask it to? And I could have the three people's names or I could have something that says all three, where you quickly type your question in, you tell me who you want to ask. And then um, as long as the board is comfortable with me being the person moderating the questions, um, as you know, I try to be as, as transparent as possible. Uh, but if there's a question that comes in that, that either I don't understand or that uh, seems not to be appropriate, then I'm gonna skip that question. Um, and, and I know that can sometimes make people uh, unhappy. So I just wanna make sure that, that the board understands that, um, that and that we're going into it knowing that that could, be, that could happen. Although I certainly will do my best. 
Yeah, I think it's definitely important when you know, Google survey, you have the person's name. So people aren't just throwing questions in there. So anybody with a kind of a, a I don't know, they could make up a name anyways, I guess, but um, that, that they're accountable for any questions that they have. <clears throat> they're good questions, but. Cool. Yeah, I think you can discern what would be a, you know, a, a question that would put someone in a bad way. I just get one more screen on my desk over here and then I'll be able to do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And, and another arm, Dan. So you'll be all right. We'll be all um, right. We'll make it work. All right. Let's get down to uh are we are we good with that? Yeah, I, I have the direction I need unless there's more. I'm gonna all right. We have we have we have two board members that have joined, right? Am I correct on that? I saw Anita. Did Joe make it in? <clears throat> yep, I'm just on the phone. Just leave it come on. Yeah, I had Anita come in at 7.10. Joe, could you just let us know what time you came in? Uh, 7.19. 19. 19. Oh, you got him, Toby? All right. Yes. Oh, good job, Toby. Thank you. Yep. Awesome. Okay. So for the folks that have just joined us, uh, Anita and Joe, we are faced with a decision tonight. Um, I don't know if, Dan, if you want to give a summary. I, I think Joe and, and Anita know why we're here. Um, and understand that the assessment changed. You both understand that the assessment changed and it is approximately $5 million less than it was when we were forming our budget? Yep, I do. You, you both know that, okay. So the ramifications of that is obviously we have to make some type of change um, or not to meet that. So there's two options on the table and Dan had sent them in uh, to us today. There were three, but number two is is no longer an option. So the first option is to go out as is at $29 and 90 cents, uh, which is an increase from last year. Uh, and, uh, but it keeps everything intact and it's basically- Sorry, I accidentally got cut off. Okay. So I'll go back again. It was, uh, so, so we have two options to go out, Anita and Joe. The first option, is to keep it as is. But with the reduction in the assessment, um, it's going to cost $29.90 instead of the previous amount, which was $28. And someone please help me out 54. there. $28.54. So it is a significant increase in order to keep the budget as is, but that's what it costs to run the school. The, set, the second option, which is option three, is to borrow some money from our savings. The benefit of that is it brings the taxable amount very close to what we were originally going out at, actually three cents less if I wrote my notes correctly, 28.51 if we borrowed $75,000 from our funds and put it into our operating uh uh, you know, it's our operating account, so we can still keep everything. We can still provide, uh, you know, a reasonable within what we were going to go out with tax rate. The consequences of that, though, is obviously we're taking $75,000 out of our savings, which we'll never get back again. Uh, and if we need it next year, um, it reduces our ability to capture certain tax when we go back out again, because we would be below the tax cap and we kind of know what's happened when we've gone out below the tax cap before and tried to regain some money. So there's consequences to it, but there's also the benefit of, hey, you know, we were going out at 28.54, now we're going to go out at 28.51, and maybe that's more palatable for folks in regards to passing the budget. Um, I'm explaining this to you as someone who is convinced that the first option is the best because that would have that's what it costs to run the school and that's what we should go out with. But if anyone else wants to explain the benefits of option three, please do so now. Tom, wasn't the 2851 with $150,000 contribution? Yes. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. $150,000 okay. contribution. Well, we would take $150,000 to stay within the amount of 2851. Yeah. Right. I'm sorry. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. I'm sometimes dyslexic when I write my notes. Um, so, uh, so it would be, it would be if we did the 75,000, I don't know. 29, 24. Oh, yeah. okay. So it's 29, 24. Uh, if we 
take 75,000. So there was talk about 150. We were like, well, maybe 150 is too much to take out our savings. What about if we take 75,000 out? It still brings the tax down by 66 cents from what we would go out at. Um, so that's that's kind of the gist of the things. The first one is we go out as is. That's the budget we put out. That's what we need to run the school. It's got all the programs intact. It's twenty nine ninety, or we borrow money that we're not going to see again. Artificially get to where we need to be um, to run the school, and the consequences of that obviously affect our sustainability and ability to recover tax. Um, the, the 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 cons of the first one is we're going out with a pretty high tax rate, um, and people are worried that it may not pass because of that, and we know how horrible terrible, no good, very bad, um, a contingency budget is. So um, that's the that's the discussion on the floor. Someone please uh, jump in if I'm not explaining it the way I should. Tom, I think just just to make one clear, I think that 2990, is, a, is that less than a half a percent increase in taxes? I think that might be right. So when you say exorbitant or high, I don't know if that's really- right. So I, I'll clarify that. And I don't have the percentage in front of me, James. But it's 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 over a dollar more than we've been advertising. Let me say it that way in our last several meetings. It's really only about 70, 63, 64 cents more than this year's rate. Um, but when we talk about what we've been messaging, we've been messaging the $28.54. But if you just talk about any the increase from last year's, it's like that 60, 60 something cents above it. 2.15%. There you go. Thanks, Charlene. So any questions, Joe or Anita? So I think the other thing to add no, is I that if for some oh. reason the, the first vote You froze up there, Todd. I think I have a good yeah, understanding no, can of I, it. Can I just add, yeah, the, the difference if the vote uh, does go down, we would have to, if we were to force to go to contingency budget, which we do not need to do, uh, go if uh, the first budget fails. But if we do have to go to contingency budget, we would have to cut another $385,000 from our budget uh, is how I see it. Am I correct with that? No, nobody, nobody wants the budget to go down. Like None of us want that. Absolutely not. We didn't want that last year either. Then, then, then it happened. I know. But there we were. <laughs> Right. And if the first vote does go down, if we vote for option C, we're already starting 75000 in a hole and we've got to take more away or borrow more, depending on how you look at it. If we go out as is and we need a second round because the first round goes down and we start from there. So that's, that's pretty much the gist of the conversation. But again, if anyone has a contrary view, I do not want to monopolize this. So please state your piece so i don't have any questions i think i i understand looking at the pieces um as as i was thinking about it and looking at it i was thinking back of a few years ago i don't remember how how many years when we made the tax rate lower and looking at the future of the district every year after that we've had a struggle to get back where we need to to just run the school um to get back to that point piece because of like tax caps and things like that that we've had struggles on so i guess my concern would be if you continue to make that lower on the tax side to get it to then in the thought process pass are we then inhibiting the future years of what we need to get to run that school school um with the money that's coming in um so it, it sounds to me like the the first option um would probably look like the best uh, looking at it going towards the future because we're only going to be inhibiting where we go after this year. I know we need to make the decision on what we're doing now, but we got to look forward ahead. Good point, Joe. So, so um, in looking at the agenda, Toby, I'm thinking that it might be helpful if we do this. Um, if we if we amend the agenda so that letter A under action says. Um, motion to approve making adjustments to the proposed 21-22 school budget. That's that's it for action item 
A, and then we'll make the item that currently says A into B because we have kind of two conversations going here. One is whether you wanna make adjustments to your budget and property tax cap. And the other is if we do, how much will it be? So maybe the first item is for the board to take action on a motion to decide if you're gonna make adjustments or not. And you can still have more discussion, but I'm thinking that is probably the best way to, that would be my recommendation for proceeding to get past, if you get past the first one, we gotta talk about numbers. If you don't get past the first one, it's over. Does that make sense? Uh, slightly. I, I think that's overcomplicating it, though. I mean, we're keeping our budget. Well, we're going to make a vote to keep the budget as is. And if that passes, we need no further action, right? Right. So the motion as it's written, though, Tom, says to approve a resolution to enact the following adjustments to the proposed Fort Edwards school budget for the 21-22 school year and be a further resolve that the Fort Edward school property tax report card and any other required notifications for the 21-22 proposed school budget be amended, amended in accordance with these adjustments. And then there's blanks for me to write in the adjustments or Toby to write in the adjustments. So you're right, you could just run that first motion. And if that, that just means that letter I would be no change. Right, we're going to make adjustments zero. If that's the way you're going, I just didn't know. If that, that, if that fails, then we have to make a motion with it with a change, right? And that's what we have to do. We've got to do something tonight. Yeah. So okay. So so that okay. So this is what we're going to do. Tom, can you make it clear though? First, if it's we were looking at twenty eight fifty eight, right? That was the initial one that we were throwing out. Now, if we take if we go the 75, that's going to be 2924. And then the, the budget that we're looking at is 2990. So those are the three numbers that we're looking at. I think the first one was 2854, James. Four? Okay. 2854. Okay. And then you're correct, 2924 and then 2990. Okay. Based on real property numbers today. Yeah, yeah just just so everybody knows what numbers we're talking about. Okay. Well, uh, well, the first motion is going to be to go as is, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so twenty nine ninety. So, so, so motion. So, letter A is going to be a motion to make no adjustments to the proposed twenty one twenty two school budget. Right, Tom? That's what you're trying to. And does that satisfy what you have to do? Because you guys do have to put that in report form. So, does that satisfy that? If we have to make no adjustments, there is very little reporting work that has to be done. It's right. all about messaging work that has to be done. Right. Okay. Okay. So I need a motion to approve a resolution that keeps the current budget intact as is. I need a motion. Chris. Motion. Second. Joe. Any further discussion? So this is just to keep the overall budget, not for the tax rate, correct? No, this is it. This is this. this is my it. understanding is this means we will make no changes to the documents that we've provided. Okay. Knowing that, knowing that the tax rate will increase to about twenty nine ninety. Okay. Correct. correct, Tom. That's the. That is exactly correct, Dan. Thank you. All right, we have a first. We have a second. Any further yeah. discussion? Yeah, I just want to make. We got to make it clear too that. Um, we this has got to pass. It has got to pass. So we have to look at this thing. What? How are the taxpayers going to react? I know what I want. I know what should be there, but we got to make something that the taxpayers are going to react. Right. Just so we're clear. Understood. I agree. Yeah, the messaging is going to be very important here, and I think the biggest message is this is what we need to do the right thing by the kids. Help us out, folks. Okay. All right, I got a motion. I got a second. Uh, we're going to do a roll call for the vote. Um, Toby, would you do a roll call, please? Tom Roche. Yes. Anita Tripp. Yes. Todd Tyler. Todd Tyler. Muted. I said I was muted. No, no, no. Joe Carroll. Yes. Chris Miles. Yes. Ella Collins. No. J. 
James Donahue. No. Chris Durkee, Christina Durkee. No. And Dan Shields is absent. Yep. So we are deadlocked, which means the motion fails by yes, Robert's rule. Yep. Okay. Let's get back at it. Okay. So the next option that most of us talked about was to go out and take $75,000 from the funds and uh, that would reduce it by 66 cents. Is that correct? Yeah, so I can give you the exact, um, based, exact, exact, well, exact estimate. Um, that if you take 75,000 from your fund balance and apply it to the budget, it gives you a tax rate of $29.24, $29 which is about approximately three cents less than last year. It's how much less than last year? Three cents. I can put it back up. Oh, give me one three second. Three cents. Um, this one right here. You save three cents. And we it cost us seventy-five thousand dollars in tax next year. Well, no, you're saving three cents from last year's, but you're saving sixty-something cents from what you would be going out at if you went out at twenty-nine ninety. But all we're doing is shortchanging ourselves for the future. Against seventy-five thousand, yeah, that still doesn't make any sense to me. But it is what it is. All right, so uh, so we're so now the rate is Dan just for the for the motion. The rate is going to be. Yeah, estimated rate would be the twenty nine, uh, twenty nine dollars and twenty four cents per thousand. Okay, and that's three cents less than last year. Wow. Okay. I have last year's down as uh, twenty nine, twenty eight. So I guess it's four cents. Four cents. Less. Okay. Let me suggest that your levy state or that your motion state the levy and not the tax rate, please. Yes. Yeah, the motion should be, this one should be read just like it is on the paper. And I can put it up if you need me to. I got it right here. And I'm going to fill in item I that we are using $75,000 from, do I need to name the fund? No, $75,000 of fund balance, fund balance to be used to reduce the levy by $75,000. All right, I'm gonna throw a wrench in. What would it be for 50 only? Well, that's gonna bring you up above last year. Right, but above by how much cents, how many cents? So you want me to add $25,000 back, right? Sorry. Seventy-five. That's all right, I just have to, I have to do it so it's right. If we're gonna, I mean, if we're, this is a time to explore and figure it out. Just to see the difference. Well, the difference in sixty-six cents. So it'd be like thirty cents more, about. Probably thirty cents. Hold on. Twenty-nine forty-six is the right. You got it, Charlene. Already. I think it's twenty-nine forty-six at yep. fifty thousand. You're talking at fifty thousand. Yeah, twenty nine forty six three six five six is what I got. Which yeah, make, which makes you about nineteen and a half cents higher than last year. But then, what's the sense? Pardon which me. Is Reduce your tax. Right. So I, you're midway through a motion, Tom. I'm midway through a motion. Uh, you started reading it. You said you were going to pencil in seventy-five thousand of fund balance to reduce the levy by seventy-five thousand, and, and then. Uh, yeah, I was I was just writing down what I have to say, so I did not start the motion. Got it. Um, and I want to be clear, it did not start. But are we back to seventy-five, or are we? Yeah, I just wanted to see what it would have been if it would have been close enough to like twenty nine thirty instead. But yeah, 
Okay, so <clears throat> so it was seventy five thousand dollars of fund balance to reduce the levy by seventy five thousand dollars. That's what's going to go on item one. Okie dokie. And All before right. we vote, ev before we vote, everybody's clear that this is going to further hinder us from getting money for future years. No, I think that was understood and pretty clear, Chris. Okay. Um, it also masks what it actually costs to run this place by seventy-five thousand um, so, dollars. Dan, you know, what was it? Two about two percent, right? So we're losing that that two percent. Seventy-five thousand percent. Yeah, which Dan was saying sixty-six thousand is two percent. Okay. And and Charlene did 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 make the point that it's seventy-five thousand dollars plus two percent of seventy-five thousand dollars every year going forward, right, right. Charlene? Right. And the nice thing this year is that because the pilot is coming off, your cap was extremely high. Uh, you're never going to see that again. Right. So I hope this works and I hope this 66 cents is the difference between a yes and a no. All right. So motion to approve a resolution to enact the following adjustments to the proposed Fort Edward school budget the 2021-2022 school year and be it further resolved that the Fort Edward School Property Tax Report Card and any other required notifications for the 2021-2022 proposed school budget be amended in accordance with these adjustments to take $75,000 of fund balance and use it to reduce the levy by $75,000. I need a motion. Motion. Oh, I'll second it. I think it was Christina and Todd. Is that correct? Okay. Any discussion? Okay. Uh, we have two motions. Uh, Toby, please give me a roll call. Tom Roche. No. Anita Tripp. No. Todd Tyler. Yes. Joe Carroll. No. Chris Miles. No. Ella Collins. Yes. James Donahue. Yes. Christina Durkee. Yes. Dan Shields is absent. Oh, looky here. So it fails again. Hung jury. <laughs> All right, we need some compelling arguments here because we've got to pass something tonight. So, Dan Shields isn't expected to be here anytime soon, is he? Did he completely bug out or did he say he'd be here late? He said he wouldn't be able to make it. Oh, Would you like okay. to see the five year tax cap calculation? I'm sorry? Would anybody like to see the five year tax cap calculation? That would be wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Let me uh, turn it on so you can share your screen. Should be good. Bear with me. This is new for me. And now how do I share my screen? The bottom right hand corner should say present now. Okay. And, that it'll, now? and then it'll say um, a window or your screen. So if you've got it in a separate window, you can just click on that window and it'll put it up. Nope. <laughs> Cancel. Dan, while she's doing that, um, you have easy access to the tax rates over the last five years or so. Can you is see that, it now? Is that easy? I can. I can try, Todd. I just. I no. Just look at. I don't know if that's people look at over time. I know they just look at last year. Do you see my screen? 
We don't, Charlene. Not or at least yet. I don't. Is it something you could send to Dan? Maybe he can do it if you email it to him or something. Yeah, if you send it to me, Charlene, I can send it, email it to me, and I'll pop it up. Okay. And also, I think that um, I think that Dan Shields might might jump on. Can I ask a question while we're waiting for that? Sure. Yes, Didn't sir. we last meeting already vote the budget um, numbers that we had? Correct. So, so you would have to, you would have to the budget. So do we have do we have to take this action if it's just going to be the same? Correct. So if no, a great question. If no action occurs tonight, the budget goes out as is, right? Because we already approved it last time. If there is an action tonight that changes anything, then you've already made your decision. I just want to, and, and, and the reason for tonight's meeting was to let everybody know, including the public, that we had that change in assessment, which was then going to affect the, um, the tax rate for the taxpayers. So if we don't get a motion that passes, you are, um, it's a great question, Joe. It, it, it's just over. You make a motion to adjourn the meeting and it's over. You're, you're muted, Tom. I don't want to do that to my fellow board members, so I wouldn't pull something like that. But, folks, uh, it seems pretty clear that if we can't come to a head on something, we're not going to have action, and then it's going to go out as is. That seems pretty pretty on the mark there. But go ahead. Uh, show us what you're showing us. Uh, remember. Someone's sending an email. I'm going to set. Oh, we can see that. Oh, so we can see your screen now. There you go. Look at that. So, all right. So just, uh, all right. So you should be able to see it now. Oops. Cancel this. Uh, save and change this now. All right. So if you can see that screen. Oh, there it is. Can you see it? We can. Yes. Oh, okay. If you can make it a little bit bigger just for my. All right. Station, I appreciate it. But So what I want to just do is, whoops. So you see this year, your tax cap calculation is allowing you 12.78% increase. But next year and the next three years, four years, the next four years, your tax cap calculation is only going to be $50,000. Charlene, can you, at the bottom right hand of your Excel sheet, just slide it to the plus so they can, and then recenter what you're trying to show us? To the plus? You see how there's this little slider? Yeah. Down farther. Down a little bit more. See that little gray line? Or just right the there. Slide it to zoom. Make oh, it big. Big? And then center That's it so beautiful. we can see it. All right. You want it really big. Okay, so now can you see? Perfect. All right. So this year, your tax cap calculation is 12.78%. So you don't need a super majority. All you need is a majority. You got majority last year. Your, your tax, your budgets would have passed last year both times if it hadn't been in excess of the cap. You are never, ever, ever going to be in this situation again. And it's because the pilot has fallen off. Next year, you're not going to get enough to cover squat. And the next four years, you're not going to get enough to cover squat. You're gonna keep. You're gonna have to keep cutting and cutting and cutting and using your savings over and over and over again. This is the only year. This is your blessing year. I'm. Re I'm really putting this on thick because this is the way it is. This is the year to be under the cap and not need a super majority. This is the year to fix your tax cap. It's not gonna happen again. Well said. Well said. Does that change anyone's mind? Because if it does, in favor of option A, we just call for an adjournment right now. No, Tom, Tom I'm I, I, looking at those numbers. And again, I was for it in the first place. I just want this budget to go through. That's the reason why I, I turned down the initial. You, think, you really think 66 cents is going to do that, James? I don't know. That's what I'm thinking now. In looking at this thing here. Looking at those caps and, and, and the projections, I think we got to go out with the original budget. Like I said at the beginning. Hear ye, hear ye. Wonderful. 
Okay, so by my calculation, unless anyone else changes sides, we now have a majority in favor of option A. So all we have to do is call for an adjournment and, I, and, and the budget goes out as... So, so let, me, let, me, let me say one thing. Okay. Might, it, might, it, might it make more sense for the board to take affirmative action yes. than to just adjourn the meeting? That's fine. Whatever works. But can we vote on the same thing again? I you guess can, we can. Okay. Item, we can bring it up. C, item C, right? And then say it again. Motion to make no adjustments to the 21-22 uh, proposed budget. Hold on. Just close my agenda. Charlene, can you roll that down a little bit? Or, I mean, roll it up. Go the other way. Okay. Okay. So, my original motion was... Item C. Okay. Item C in action. Motion to approve a resolution to keep the 2021-2022 budget as it was initially as it was initially. Approved. Initially approved by the board. Initially approved by the board. Need a motion. Motion. Need a motion. Second. Joe. Toby, let's get a vote, please. Tom Roche. Yes. Anita Tripp. Yes. Todd Tyler. No. Joe Carroll. Yes. Chris Miles. Yes. Elle Collins. No. James Donahue. Yes. <clears throat> Chris Durkey. Christine yes. Durkey. Yes. Yes. Okay. And I see Dan Shields is on. Dan Shields is on. Okay. Dan. Wow. Tom, can you restate the motion? Please. Yeah. I don't know if he knows what's behind it, but uh, most to approve resolution to enact the following adjustments to propose for Edwards School Budget for the 2021-2020 uh, school year entered as voted on initially by the board. Okay, and that's that we're going to dip into the funds? No, no, that means it goes out as is. <clears throat> okay. So, yes is that it goes out as is, and no is that we dip into the funds? Is that correct? Correct. No would be something else, yes. Okay. So, I vote no. Okay. What's the count there, Toby? One, two, three, four, five, six, yes, and three, no. Motion passes. Motion passes. Excellent. A lot of, uh, lot of hard discussion tonight, folks. I just want to make sure that counts correct. I'm not questioning you, Toby. Yes, uh, correct. It is correct. Okay, it's six. I th okay, I counted wrong. My bad. Wasn't good at math. Okay, motion passes. Uh, budget goes out as is. Uh, the point is, though, the messaging, right? We got to talk about how important it is to pass the budget to the kids and do all that stuff. And again, if it doesn't for some, if it does fail the first time, then we come back to the table and we do work like we talked about this evening. Um, but at least we have room to wiggle. Um, but the message is we need it. This is what it costs. If folks are passionate about keeping the school, this is what it costs. If you can't agree with this, you, it doesn't make sense to have a school or you want your kids to have 40 kids in a classroom and no sports and nothing else like that. That's what this budget means. And this is what it costs. That's the messaging. That's a realistic uh, messaging to go out with, and hopefully people understand the reasoning. I also um, want to make sure the, the point gets across, we don't point a finger at Irving Tissue. Irving Tissue's been a friend to the community, been a friend to the school. They've, they've given us money for the program. It's the assessment that went down. It's the assessor's not tied into Irving Tissue. We needed them before. We're going to need them again. There's no doubt about it unless they, of course, <laughs> grieve it. Unless they grieve it, and then we have a bigger problem. Which but, I, uh, but and, yes. And, and the case. And the other, the other part of this is if we have to dip into our savings, it reduces the sustainability of our school. Yeah. So vote yes. Okay. Uh, I don't see a need, but anyone who does, please 
uh, correct me, but I don't see a need for exec. Nobody brought anything forward to me, Tom. Okay. So with that, uh, I need a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Second. No. Second. Second. I think it was Anita, actually. Yeah, Anita's quicker. <laughs> Anita and Joe. Um, thank you, folks, for the hard work. That's why we have so many people on this board and so many opinions. And I know every single one of us come from a place that wants to help the kids. Whether we differ in our opinion on how to do it, doesn't matter. We're all going in this with heart. And I appreciate every side of this argument. Um, and, and who knows how it's going to go out, but we have to be united when we go out there to tell folks it's important to vote yes and why. All right. With that, all in favor of adjournment. All right. Aye. 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 Good night, folks. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to stop the recording. Have a great night, everybody. You too. You too. Bye, guys. Dan, if you